Hi, I'm Teresa with Inflectra. I'll be providing a series of short videos to help you get started using Spira. In today's video, we're going to discuss baselining, a feature that's available in both Spira Team and Spira Plan. So let's get started. Spira lets you establish baselines or snapshots of a product so that you can see how artifacts like requirements and test cases have evolved over a specific interval. In Spira, we attach baselining to releases to help you more easily use baselines as part of your release planning. A typical use case would be to establish a baseline at the beginning and the end of a release, and then review the end baseline to see the changes made to the system during that release. Baselining is more sophisticated than the artifact versioning and history tracking, which is used throughout Spira test, team, and plan. The baseline saves both the set of artifact changes as well as relationships between specific artifacts, like requirements linked with test cases. And it will also save the timing of when those relationships were established or removed. Furthermore, baselining also tracks position changes. For example, if test case steps are reordered, the baseline will capture that change. So let's go into Spira now to learn how to work with the baseline functionality. Okay, here we are in Spira plan. Remember the baselining functionality is available in both plan and team. Spira lets you enable baselining per product. So the first thing we want to do for this company website product is enable baselining. And to do that, I'm going to go to my system admin menu and in my system admin uh, selection here, I'll do view edit products and I want to edit that company website product. I'm going to click yes for the baselining enabled toggle and save. And now we can go uh, directly to that product. And as you recall, I mentioned that Spira connects baselines to releases. So let's go to our release list page. You can see that this uh, particular product already has two major releases and some existing sprints. Let's connect a baseline to the first major release. On the releases detail page, you can see now in our series of tabs, we now can see a baselines tab. And just to note that the privileges for releases and baselines are the same. So if you're able to create or delete or view releases, then you'll be able to do those same uh, actions to baselines. So let's create a new baseline. I'm going to click here on the new baseline button. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to name it the same as my release name, but then I'm going to tag it with baseline one. Great. Now I'll click the add button. So now we can uh, select the link here and that will open up our product baseline um, details page. Let's take a look at a few navigation pieces here on this uh, uh, details page. First, you can see we have our title here at the top. Then we have the particular release or sprint that we've tied this uh, baseline to. Um, we have who created it and when it was created. And then we have a, a slot here for the previous baseline. In this case, because it's the first baseline, um, this baseline will uh, compare to the product start. And then down below in this baseline, uh, baseline changes area, where we see a list of the artifacts. And then this change type column indicates all the different types of changes that were made to that particular item we can click on the artifact itself. And now we have a baseline artifacts detail page. And then you can see an itemized list of exactly the changes that were made um, for that particular uh, artifact. If we click this back to baseline, we'll be taken back to our baseline uh, details page. And then we have a couple of options to navigate away here. We can go back to our release by clicking the release uh, link here, or we can go back to um, a product baseline list. 
This list will show all the baselines set up no matter which release they're associated with. And to navigate easily to this product's baselines list, we can use our uh, product admin menu here and click on product baselines. So that's the way that you would navigate around to the different um, baseline screens. So now that we've learned our way to how to navigate around, let's go ahead and make a few changes uh, to the system and then we'll create a second baseline and see those changes, um, how they're represented in, uh, in the baselines. So for now, let's go to our requirements and we're gonna um, uh, filter that for the first release. And then let's make, uh, use our tools menu here and just create some test cases. Great. Now we can go to our test case list page here. And I'm gonna select a test case and make a few changes to the test case as well. I'm gonna edit this first step. I can save that. And now I'm going to insert a couple more steps here. Great. Save and new, and let's just go ahead and add a login step. I'll save, and then that login step needs to be the first step, so I'm just gonna reposition that to the top. Now we can use our execute button and quickly uh, do a test run for this test case. We'll use our pass all feature and finish uh, to create that test run. Okay, so now that we've made a few changes, let's go back to our releases. We're gonna click on that same major release one. We're, we're already on our baselines tab here. So now let's create a second baseline. This will be baseline two. Great, I'm gonna add that. And now I'm gonna click on the link for the second baseline. Here on our product baseline details page, now you can see that the previous baseline is that first baseline that we created, baseline one. And if we scroll down under the baseline changes section, we have about 13 changes here that were made to various artifacts. So you can see there's a change type association ad that we see for both the requirement and release. That occurred when um, we created those test cases. They were linked back to the requirement and the release that uh, that the requirement was linked to. And then if we click on the test case itself, we'll see some positional changes as well. So you can see the, the test step positions that we moved around, as well as uh, the creation of, and changes we made to the description and expected result of the test steps in that case as well. And finally, we can go back to the list itself and now you can see for the product, we have two baselines and we could filter for the particular release that we wanted as well. In this case, we only have two baselines for release one, um, but you can filter for who created the, the uh, baseline. Um, there's some different uh, functionality here uh, from this product baseline list page. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching our Spira Baselines video today. We have lots more Spira Explainer videos uh, to watch, so you can go check them out now.